I love going to the dollar store. I've been there a lot. It's affordable. It's a very casual affair. There's Walmart and then there's the dollar store. So the first thing I'm gonna be customizing from the dollar store is this board. I think it's like a mini charcuterie. Chartreuse? Charcuterie? Board? Someone help me. I don't know how to pronounce things and no one around me knows how to pronounce things. So I just never learn. It says, today's menu, eat it or starve. It's not made of wood. It's like chipboard or whatever. I mean, it was only like a dollar. You gotta bring your expectations down from Walmart to dollar store. It's faux wood. They even pasted this faux wood background on it to really sell the look. I'm sold. The background is already starting to lift up. I did notice that when I was in the store. Figured since I'm giving it a makeover anyways, it doesn't really matter too much. I tried just tearing off the background. It didn't come off so easily. I even used some acetone to try to rub it off. You probably could get this paper off if you really wanted to, but I'm sleep deprived. So I just got it as smooth as I could and then covered it up with some paint. You can probably see a little bit of texture if you're looking closely. Stop looking so closely. Thank you. But if you turn it around, all the texture disappears. It's magic. I covered up the whole thing in several layers of black. And now I've ended up with this. A nice clean slate. I'm gonna do a little rough sketch here in some white colored pencil. I'm drawing a chef. He's a well-known chef on the dark side. A five Michelin star chef. Whatever that means. I affectionately refer to him as the cannibal pig. <laughs> he also goes by butcher pig. They're the same guy. He's a pig, and he likes to eat little cute chubby piglets. Gruesome stuff. I know it's not the darkness and chaos you expected, but the cannibal pig sounds pretty evil to me. Since a chartreuse board, how do you say it? I'm just gonna look it up. Charcuterie. Charcuterie. A charcuterie board is usually in the kitchen, so I just thought a chef would be a natural fit. He roasted up a fat little piglet for dinner that he's presenting on a nice big platter. Painting the piglet on a flat surface is a lot easier than trying to recreate it on a squishy. It still kind of looks like a blob though. I wanted to add like a shadow behind the piglet. The dark pink was supposed to add depth. That was the intention. I really liked the message on the board that it originally came with, so I decided to keep that. Eat it or starve. What a beautiful message. So beautiful. To make sure this piece lives on forever, I varnished it with some glossy varnish. I don't have any cheese or grapes, but here's some leftover dominoes. Same vibe. I wouldn't actually recommend eating off this board. I don't know if that's sanitary or legal. It's more for decor. Moving on. I also picked up some frogs at the dollar store. They're not just any frogs, though. They're friends forever frogs. <laughs> A lot of you guys really liked the plushy makeover I did in my Five Below video, so I've decided to make over some more little stuffed characters. This time around, I'm gonna be a little more brave and actually add some paint on the frogs. I am a little scared to paint directly on them, but I figured it's fine since they were only a dollar. 25. The thing about painting plushies is that once you get some paint on there, there's no going back. I wanted him to have an open mouth, so I tried making that. But it's not easy painting on plushies. It's almost as though they're not meant to be painted on. I added in some teeth. Frogs don't actually have teeth. He's an original, one of a kind, not bound by the rules of society, or biology for that matter. I'm not painting over the whole frog. I want to keep their soul intact. Just add a few changes to make them more silly, more my style. His eyes were looking too normal, so I upped the level of freak on him by adding some bushes. Untamed, bushy eyebrows. Lovely. I used slick paint to add in a thick tongue and also some drool. I do have a lot more I want to add to him, but first I'm gonna work on the girl frog. She looks similar. Same bushy eyebrows. They look identical, but there's no relation. The fact that they're so similar is merely a coincidence. Unlike the guy frog, she's actually wearing some makeup. She's keeping it simple for today. Other times, she goes all out. I just didn't want to scare you guys this time. Her makeup is a little smudged, but I think she still pulls off the look. Give her a break. I'm going for a good versus evil theme with these frogs. I took some felt and cut it out into the shape of wings. These are for the girl. She's the good frog. The sparkle butt. An angel with wings. Oh my god. I hot glued her wings onto the back. 
She has a shiny little halo that I shaped out of a pipe cleaner. I also added in some floral wire around the halo. I wanted the halo to look like it's floating. Then I started stabbing the sparkle butt, just creating a head wound for her halo to fit into. Wouldn't want that slipping off. I tried pushing the halo in, but I wasn't sure if it would stay. So I added some hot glue and then stabbed it back in. Hopefully that'll keep it in place. She's also holding some lettuce or bok choy or celery or whatever this is. I called it lettuce in a previous video and everyone started freaking out. Apparently it's not lettuce. But there wasn't really a general consensus as to what it is, so I'm not exactly sure what to call it now. It's whatever you want it to be. Art is subjective. It's open to interpretation. Look at it. Here's lettuce. Here's bok choy. Here's celery. I fail to see the difference. But anyways, she's holding some veggies because she's a vegetarian. She's the good frog. She wouldn't hurt a fly. Alright, back to the dark side. This guy has some devil horns, delicately hot glued onto his head. He also has a little devil's tail poking out of his butt. Whenever I cut something off a of squishy, I usually keep the scraps, just in case I ever need him again. I picked out this little squishy part to turn into a fly. Unlike his goody two-shoes counterpart, the evil frog has no problem whatsoever devouring some protein. He's managed to catch an unsuspecting fly on his tongue. I couldn't find any squishy parts that would work for the wings, so I just made them out of felt. I I kept the little fly pretty simple and derpy looking. They're very different, but also very similar. That's why they're friends, forever and ever. How beautiful. I'm getting emotional now. Let's move on. We can all move on. The next thing I picked up at the dollar store is this love meter. I guess this is how you're supposed to tell people how much you love them on a scale of, I prefer my pets to be mine. I'm joking. I guess you'll do. It's not gonna stay a love meter. I'm giving it a makeover. That's what this channel's about. That's what I do. So to paint it, I mixed up four shades of red, three of which look like they're the same shade, but they're not. There's a red, a lighter red, and even lighter red, and pink. I unscrewed the arrow. I'm going to keep the essence of this thing the same. It's still going to be a meter, but now it's going to be used to gauge how evil a person is. I chose this color range because I guess I thought it was a good variation of good to evil. I can't make a straight line, so I pulled out a ruler. I wanted everything to look nice and centered. Things still turned out slightly off center, but that's okay. I painted over the love meter signage at the bottom too. I'm sketching out some characters on it. Frogs. They're the frogs I just gave a makeover to. The Friends Forever Frogs. I made the eyes on this handsome devil look a bit more deranged than his original design. He still has a yellow belly. She still has, um, a pink belly. Everything's the same. Well, except for this little spelling error. That, was, that was an oversight. How embarrassing. I did eventually get around to fixing my little mistake. Don't talk about it. Whenever I use Mod Podge or liquid varnish, a lot of the time it smudges the paint no matter how long I let it dry. This thing was drying for like two days, so that's kind of a bummer. Plus it always leaves like a sticky residue. That's why lately I prefer using Mr. Super Clear or spray varnish. It works a lot better in my opinion. You have to wear a mask and stuff and obviously do it outside, but I feel like that's worth it. This honey and boo laptop desk that I painted for my fiance, I originally had sealed with liquid varnish. When she used it, the paint actually chipped off a bit here. I then went back and sealed it all again with Mr. Super Clear and that's been working a lot better. So yeah, gold star to Mr. Super Clear. I think the Friends Forever Frogs look really cool together and even cooler next to their evil meter. For those of you wondering, the Cannibal Pig falls into the Sprinkle Spice category. Sprinkle Spices are a scary bunch. I'm looking at you, Sprinkle Spices. I know who you are. Click to watch more or get your sparkly butt out of here.